Okay, so in uh, my neck of the woods, it's springtime. I think maybe the video is picking up the birds singing in the background. It is a beautiful day here. Anyway, I wanted to give you guys an update on the project. Uh, a lot of things have changed in this project, a lot of good things. You'll notice, for one, that the gearbox is not sitting out there anymore. <laughs> okay, after some initial testing, um, it just wasn't uh, solidly fixed to the structure and it was flopping around a little bit. And So, you'll notice now the gearbox is inside the uh, power rack. Okay, it's firmly mounted to the power rack. If we get down here, you'll notice there's a little bit of, hopefully you'll notice there's some square tubing right there. Maybe hard to see in this video, hopefully not. And that square tubing has a couple bolts, one there and one there. Excuse the chain. And it bolts through on the other side. Okay. Kind of hard to see in this video, but. So that square tube is a spacer, and it mounts to the frame. So the gearbox is mounted to the frame here in the front, and in the back, we got uh, a couple brackets I put in there, one right there. Okay, cool, right? So it's just some angle iron that I cut to length and drilled some holes in, and there's one on the other side too, which, you know, maybe kind of hard to see, but down in there, okay? And you also notice that um, I have this big one inch axle shaft going across here, sitting on two work saw horses, going across. That's right, that's very cool. That's how we are driving or transferring the energy from the weight that's been disconnected sitting over there right now. Okay. Sitting over there, usually sits right there, right? So uh, we're just transferring along that chain off the wheel. Haven't put it all, all together yet, okay? Chain's gonna go right along there, turn the axle. Don't mind that little piece of aluminum there. And it's gonna drive this one. We're just gonna go down and drive that. I already have the part of the chain set up on that one, okay? So um, there's some Things I gotta figure out, and one is making sure I don't have any chain tensioners involved with the main shaft going across here. I, I, I'm avoiding chain tensioners at all costs. I learned some lessons there, and chain tensioners are a pain in the butt, so I'm avoiding them. And um, you'll notice so there's two chains, right? There's one that runs down here, which drives the, the shaft, and then there's another one that drives the gearbox. So how do you get two chains on the same axle? tight or with no very little or no slack without chain tensioners. <laughs> yeah, that's right folks, that's some serious mathematics right there because uh, you'll notice I have some things clamped up. I got a piece of angle iron here, that's where we're going to put some bearings in and that shaft is either going to go up there and mount to that or or this angle iron is going to come down. There's one over here as well. Got a little bracket there holding that one in. Okay. And I'll get to that later because that's still, that's still coming. So how do you do that? How do you guarantee two chains being tight with no chain tensioners when the distance from the axle to the center of the wheel or the sprocket is different for each one? <laughs> it's not as easy as you think. Yes, you can clamp it up and you can move things around and you can trial and error. and You'll probably get it eventually, but uh, mathematically, the way we have to do that is um, we use what's called uh, XYZ um, coordinate in three dimensional space. And by moving any one of the dimension, uh, distances on those, those three dimensions, any one of those dimensions, if we change them, uh, the, the length of the chain changes for both, for this gear set as well as for that little 23 tooth one there and the big 114. So uh, I got that all set up in a spreadsheet and you know I'll probably put that up on YouTube documents or something one of these days and you guys can check it out. But yeah, pretty inter interesting mathematics calculating the distance. Um, not just between two XY coordinates, but 
how changing the distance between a set of xy coordinates affects another set of xy coordinates, which is exactly what we got here. And uh, very interesting. And there's some chain um, length and link calculations going on there as well. Really cool stuff. Um, great mathematics that's really helping out. Um, so anyway, what I'm doing right now today, you'll notice this little piece of aluminum sitting there. And I have a little piece of angle iron that's going on along the side of the gearbox. Uh, what I'm doing is measuring the distance from, from the floor on up to the middle of that shaft. And I'm about to get into that now so that I can actively calculate the um, chain links that are going to be required. So uh, that's tedious, man. It's like down to the 32nd of an inch. Okay, that's very tedious. But it's worth it and getting it right the first time, so I have to come back and revisit it. So very cool stuff. I just wanted to show you guys what's going on there. The video really doesn't show everything. It's um, The gearbox is so much more solid over here. And um, I ran some weight, actually, about a couple weeks ago. And the gearbox moved really well, and, and things were very cool. Um, so I was very pleased by that. I learned a lot running that weight. And uh, it led me to understand some things about chain tension and slack and all that. And, and uh, so I made some, um, some decisions to, to uh, put the gearbox in here. And what's really cool also, guys, about putting the gearbox in here is we have a smaller footprint, right? We don't have the gearbox sitting out here. So this is a more um, condensed package, smaller footprint. So that's really cool, too. So as soon as I get this all back put together and this is running smooth, and I'll talk about the gear ratios real quick. This gear ratio right here, um, all the total gear ratio is about 640 to one. That's right, 640 to one. Uh, by adding in the, this additional axle here, the shaft, I was able to um, have a lot more flexibility with the gear ratio. So the gear ratio isn't just limited to the gearbox with this additional shaft uh, really helped out. So about 641 for those of you who are interested. Okay, if you want to know the exact um, numbers, there's 114 tooth sprocket there. That's 23 tooth sprocket there. It's a B style sprocket if you're interested. Two little collars on each side. Holding it in place. Uh, this big sprocket here is 98. And then in the gearbox, um, Runs down to 56, to the one it's running to, then the big one on the right is 98, and the little one, which is a 10, it's really tiny, then another 98 right there, running to 13 teeth, and then I believe we're just running 35 to 35 to keep the ratio the same to the PMA. So, pause the video, listen to all that again, you'll get your gear ratios down to exactly what I got going on, and um, we'll see. We'll see what happens under load. Should be very interesting. Okay, guys, video's getting very long, so um, I'll get back to you, everybody, once we have something more to show, okay? Thanks for watching, as always, guys. Chill out.